Today's show is pre recorded. Like a million bucks, but the things in its cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. Everybody out there listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, 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 oh. I sure will. A good morning, everybody. You're listening to The Voice. I said, come on now, dig me, the one and only Steve Harvey. Got a radio show. Okay, now I'm going to be really honest with you this morning. I really don't know what to say. I really don't. Um, I was sitting here and I was thinking, what do I say today? I do know that I want to be encouraging, uplifting, and inspirational in some way to affect somebody today. Oftentimes, these conversations that I have in the mornings, they're designed with me because <laughs> I, 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 I need it myself, y'all, to be honest with you. I mean, you know, who, who makes the comedian laugh, I used to say all the time. And even though what we talk about in the morning is not a laughing matter, it kind of like is, is who I am today. You know, I, I need motivation in my life sometimes myself. I think when I get in moments like this, I, I often res, resort back to the same thing over and over and over. And when I find myself in, in certain predicaments, I can always fall back on the same thing over and over. So while I'm sitting here trying to figure out what to say to you, the the one thing that I did do this morning that I find to be very consistent in me is that I find myself grateful. I'm ever grateful for the things that God has done for me. I may not always know what to say, but I know how to say thank you. I do. I know how to remember and reflect back on where I come from. I know how to realize where all my blessings come from. I, I, I'm i very, very conscious of my journey that I've been on, the, the one that was from then until now. That journey right there is, is, it's been it's been it's been uh it's been difficult, man. It really, really has. I I ain't gonna lie to you. Um me becoming successful was very difficult. But as hard as this is to say, I really, really mean this. I wouldn't change nothing about the trip I've been on. Number one, because I can't change anything about it 
So I never lived my life in regret. But the main thing is, was I discovered along the way, now, not during the process, when you're going through rough moments, you can't hardly see the good in it at the time. It's just rough for you, and it seems unexplainable, and oftentimes I thought it was unfair. But as I am now, I needed every single thing that happened to me, that happened to me, to happen to me. I hope that makes sense to you. I needed everything to happen in the exact order and the exact way that it happened in order for me to be the person that I've become. And that right there, man, is is just very comforting to me. Bishop Jakes told me one time, he said, the closer you get to God, the more friendly you all become the more he will reveal to you uh, the how comes and the what fors of a lot of things that's happened to you. Because a lot of times what troubles us is we just can't understand why we lost that loved one back then. We just can't understand why we didn't get what we wanted back then. We just don't understand how come our plan didn't work out and we had to fail so miserably back then. We don't understand the answers to these things. Well, the closer I've gotten to God, the more those explanations have become crystal clear to me. And see, the one thing that I came to the realization, everybody, is that the things that was happening to me, they wasn't really all bad. They really wasn't. That. They, they didn't taste good when it was happening. I didn't enjoy what I was going through. But as I look back on them and reflect now, it wasn't all bad. Some of those things were so necessary for me to get the information. Because, see, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of hard-headed and stubborn. I said, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of hard-headed and stubborn. I kind of like to think that I know something about some things every now and then. And the things I am convinced about, I don't really, really care for people trying to talk me off mine. So I can be stubborn and hard-headed sometimes. God knows that about me. So I think to get some of the messages crystal clear through to me that I needed to learn, that was this process I had to go through. That process was my journey. It was my trip. It was my woe, my pain. See, everybody got them different. It don't matter what it is. Everybody got a woe. Everybody got a pain. Everybody got a trial. Everybody got some tribulations. Everybody got some challenge. I don't care who you are. Just quit looking at me thinking that I got it going on so tough. Man, but if, Steve, yeah, it's easy for you to say that, but you ain't here. You don't know where I've been. If you would stop hanging yourself up on your past, worrying about your woes and your troubles and the situation you're in, and start praying, and start asking God to get you through it. See, a lot of times you messed it, you you messed the message up yourself. Because when you're going through some stuff, you ask God to remove it and take it away. That ain't the lesson you got to learn. Your lesson sometimes has got to it's, it's got to be how to be strong, how to see it through, how to bear under it, how to carry that weight long distances for long periods of time. That's how you get strong. The lesson is, is to make you stronger, but to make you stronger, you got to carry the weight. You can't get stronger, you don't go to the gym, or you don't do something at your house to lift your own body weight. See, a, 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 a lot of people can't even do push-ups. They, 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 they can't get down and in the course of a day give you 100 push-ups because they ain't, they ain't, they ain't never tried it. They, about, they get to 20 and they're shaking so bad they stop. Woo! That's too much for me. Well, let me tell you something. So I learned to quit praying to take stuff away. My prayer became to give me the strength to handle it. People oftentimes ask me, how do you do all that you do in the course of the day? I don't really know. I just know I can. Because I know God don't put more on you than you can bear. So when you ask me how you do all of what you do in the course of the day, I got God. God is good. He'll get you through whatever it is you're going through. So when you're tripping and you don't know what to say, reflect and be grateful for all you reflect on. Think about God's goodness and watch what he do for you. 
That's the cold part, okay? You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, the voice you are about to hear is that of Roscoe Wallace, an old lounge singer that was alive and well and born somewhere in the 1940s. He has claimed to be the maker of most hits in the world today. You've never seen him before, the places he only performs at all. Little well-known Holiday Inn Express lounges mm. next to the complimentary free breakfast at Comfort Inn Suites. That is his career due to bad decisions, business decisions, and fallouts with every major promoter in the country and artist. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Roth Skoll Wallace. Somebody say... Said that was dancing in the streets. Because I wrote that. <laughs> Somebody told me. <laughs> Come on now. That it was really me. See what I mean? See what I mean? So these are the songs that I've written over the world. Just want to say good morning, everybody. <laughs> Let you know that Roscoe Wallace is still in the building. And no matter <laughs> what the announcer said, <laughs> he don't know. Because why? He wasn't there. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for having me. I'm out of here. What's up, Junior? <laughs> oh, man, do we talk to Roscoe? Can we talk to Roscoe? Ain't no, ain't no, baby. You want to talk to me? Here I go. What, <laughs> yeah. what you got? Wait, Roscoe, let me ask you something, man. <laughs> All do, day, baby. Do, 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 do you day. really feel a lot of pride in writing everybody hits? Oh, man, oh, man, you don't know what it do to me. You just don't <laughs> know. You, you have no idea the joy that, res- that respinates through my soul for the way that I help. Uh, uh, just really uh, done my entire career and the hits yeah. out of the road. You can't name a hit. Roscoe ain't woke. Did you write any of Jodice's hits? Well, that, you know, that I don't want to take credit for because of the uh, drinking and things like that. I'm <laughs> trying to be an example because I still play Santa Claus <laughs> down at the uh, VHW <laughs> Hall. So I don't want to, you know, associate myself with the alcoholics that they have become. The Commodores know you wrote all they hit? Every last one of them. That's why I fell out with the promoters. Because when I show up to get my uh, residual checks, they don't want to pay. And that's why I've fallen out with everybody. What kind of checks? Residual. Residual? Residual, residual. <laughs> tomato, tomato. What you want to do? <laughs> I just all of it right means somebody got my money. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I know. So what's the biggest artist you've played, Roscoe? Big oh, one. man. One time I did a uh, Wembley. Wembley Arena in London. I've done all of them. I've done a whole Madison Square. <laughs> you know, I've done a, I've done all the stadiums. I did the Dallas Cowboys Stadium for Jerry Jones was the owner. Oh. You know, I did everything. I did I, I did Woodstock. I was at Woodstock. I wrote all them white kids songs. <laughs> Every last one of them. White kids naked in the mud. I said, look at these white folks out here. <laughs> You can't put white folks in no dirt and no water because they're going to make mud and play it <laughs> every damn time. Thank you, Junior. Yeah, no problem, Roscoe, man. Ain't no Junior, baby. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye, Shirley. Carl, I know you Bye. hate me. Bye, Bye Roscoe. <laughs> in Bye, the Roscoe. mouth. <laughs> All right, coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, we'll have Run That Prank back with the nephew right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, time now for Run That Prank Back with the nephew. What you got for us, Nev? Chopper's funeral at the club. Chopper's funeral at the club. Let's go, cat dog. Hello? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to reach uh, James. 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 Yeah, yeah. What's up? Hey, this this is uh, Gerald. Uh, I, I was a friend of uh, uh, your, your friend, Chopper. Yeah, yeah, huh? And Chopper just uh, passed away last week, right? Uh, I know they supposed to have a funeral and stuff over at uh at Mount <laughs> Baptist Church, and uh I, I don't really know you, but me me and me and Chopper and a bunch of the rest of us, man, we used to hang out at the club not too far from the house. You know, that's pretty much where yeah. Chopper was all the time at the, uh-huh. at the club. Yeah. Anyway, what bunch of us was over at the club talking, man, and I was we was really want to reach out to one of the family members, you know, and then somebody said you was you know kind of a good friend of his, uh-huh. and. Well, we 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 decided to call you and see if you didn't mind. Do, do you think 
that you can talk to uh, some of the family members and see if they don't mind having the funeral at the club. At the club. What, what, see what I'm. Let me let me try to explain something to you, uh, Jane. Yeah, what we're trying to do is see. We believe well, that we believe. Well, you, you said at the club. Come on, the club. There's a funeral. What? I, and that's what I, and I understand it. But see, see, Chopper, Chopper ain't really go to church a whole lot. You know what I'm saying? He ain't really, really go. As long as I've been knowing him, now he loved the Lord and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, but these are church going folks. They yeah, want a funeral. But I, I understand. But see, Chopper wasn't. Chopper wasn't. Chopper went to the club. So what I'm asking you is, let's have a funeral at the club. Hell no, bro. Come on. We can't have no <laughs> funeral at no club, man. Come on. No, no. I okay, get, but, I but what, what I'm saying is, though, is that he wasn't really, he wasn't really no church going person. I believe that a person ought to be, the uh, 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 last words ought to be said over him in a place he's more familiar with. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't. I don't know what you mean, player. No, this this got to be a funeral. This 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 is church for. I go to church, and all my folks go to church. No, we 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 got to do this thing up in church. This this is a church thing. But you don't you don't feel. But do you understand where I'm coming from? No, that man ought to gone on, and and the last words ought to be in a place he more familiar with. Now, if he went to church, then I understand that. You see no, what I'm saying? Oh, bro, hell no, no. See, it, this is chance. To, to get itself right, and we don't we don't have them up in church in, in front of everybody. You know that don't make sense. Who's this again? I mean, who are you? My, my name's Gerald. But, but who is Gerald? I mean, how do how do you relate to this? Are, are you a preacher? Or are you? No, you, no. What, no. Where are you? No, 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 no. I'm I'm I was friends with Chopper, and see, I hung out at the club and still hang out there with um a whole bunch of you know was real good friends with Chopper, and we were saying that you know. Yeah. Chopper's the last words about Chopper are to be said at the club because see that's what Chopper was. But five six days a week, that's what Chopper was. Yeah, but what church are you affiliated with? I mean, what? what why the hell would I I, I I I try to talk to the family, make me look stupid in front of the family, telling them to put the thing in a club? How the f- that gonna go off? Well, well, see, see, that's what I'm saying. You know them way more than we do because yeah, see but they. You talking about? trying to move from a damn funeral at a church to a damn nightclub or a strip club or something. No, it's not no strip club, just a nightclub. Well, you... It's the same thing, ain't it? I mean, you talking about having folks travel from across the country and meeting in the damn club. What kind of is that? But that's what Chopper how... was. That's what Chopper was. How the I'm going to look if I'm the one telling them to move this to the damn club? You're going to look like somebody that's trying to... I'm going to look like a Food. No, you're not. You're going to look like somebody that's trying to keep it real. I can't even come to the damn funeral if I was to do some like that. Okay, okay, let me ask you this here then. Let me ask you this here, uh, Jane. Do you think Do you think you can uh, maybe get the body and bring it over to the club? No, hell no. Well, I'm just saying before they even do the funeral or whatever. Oh, you... hell no. I ain't touching I'm scared to walk in the dog by myself. What the fuck am I touch the body for? Hell no. We're just trying to say our last words at Chopper Man in a place that Chopper well, most. No, hell Again, who the f*** are you? How the f*** you get my number? They, the, somebody at the club had your number said you was friends. Why the f*** y'all call me, of all folk? Because why the f*** y'all call me? They say you good, you in with the family and you can I talk. I am in with the family, but I ain't in with the family make, make me look stupid. Hell no. Won't y'all, I give y'all the number to the family. Y'all call the family. Y'all tell them that yourself man i want i just want trying to get you to bring the body by man and let us no i ain't touching no dead body we just want to have one last drink with chopper well, man you have one with your boys and you 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 get together with them and, and y'all talk about bottom and, 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 and let them know how chopper was what kind of person he was what kind of person he but we need now. to we want chopper to be there this chopper this is chopper you talking about man y'all this... bring y'all to the church y'all need to be up in the church we want to have Chopper at the club where we man, know. Come on, man, y'all full of. Where we y'all know. Ain't gonna f- my f- up and have my f- looking like a fool at a damn funeral. But, but that's about Chopper though. And damn right it's about Chopper. You bring Chopper to that club. F- y'all tripping, man? I ain't f- doing. F- I'm just going to this funeral. I'm gonna tell the family what I think about Chopper, and I'm moving f- on. If y'all want to f- act crazy in front of the town, y'all call the family y'all and do that. F- Look. 
I got one more thing I want to say. I don't even know your well, what, what, what? This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your boy. Oh, you tripping. <laughs> what? This nephew Tommy, man, from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your boy d- told me to prank you. Man, y'all full of <laughs> d- man. I just know y'all ain't did this. James, d- this is nephew Tommy, man. No, Your boy. No, d- no, 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 player. Uh, oh, oh, man, I can't believe this. D- no, he didn't. I can't even believe he did that. Hey, man, oh. I got one more thing to ask you, man. Oh, man. What is what is the baddest radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Neff. Coming up next, Ask the CLO with Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey in the building right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, we're going to tell you about the Tiger King 2 sequel. All right, that's happening on what? Netflix. <laughs> And get this, guys, a a North Carolina man won a $10 million lawsuit after claiming he was fired because he's white. We'll talk about it, but right now, let's check in with the Chief Love Officer, Steve Harvey, ready for your love questions. Uh, Quetta in Dallas writes, I got my master's degree. Quetta or Quetta? Quetta. Quetta, okay. I just ain't met no Quettas, that's fine. (laughs) (laughs) What <laughs> <laughs> okay. in Dallas Queen says, I got my master's degree and I'm a teacher at cool. the high school I graduated from. How oh, is that my problem? Surprisingly, one of my male teachers is still working at the school. He comes in by my classroom. He comes by my classroom a lot and compliments me daily. I just turned 28 and he's got to be my parents' age, but there's something about him that excites me. He never got married, and he doesn't have any children, so he tells me he wants to spoil me. I just might let him. Is that weird? Well, let me tell you what's uh, weird. He a school and it's teacher. Quetta, Steve. There's something about him, Quetta, and he's never been married, and he has no kids. Mm-hmm. I would be more concerned with the what it is about him factor mm-hmm. that you're not. What is it about him that he's never been married? He has no children, and now he won't one of the kids he taught. <laughs> you, you need to work. You need, you need to work in some more questions. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. He wants to spoil you. Hell yeah, I bet he do. Mm-hmm. I bet he do. Don't do it. Don't do Fair it. Well. Let that go. Mm-hmm. All right. Moving on to Melinda in Tampa who says, I've been in a three-way love affair for a long time. My husband and I have a housemate living with us, and she mostly spends time with my husband. I'm older now, and I'm rarely interested in participating in their shenanigans, so I moved into the other guest room. My husband is in the main bedroom by himself and recently asked me if I'd mind if our housemate slept with him all night. Is this his way of sliding her into my current position? What? What? Man. I what did I do this say? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> when this started. Lady, lady what? Yeah. Is this his way of sliding her into my main position? Um, What position Ooh. do you have? I mean, I don't understand, y'all. Uh, oh, what? Lady, lady, lady let me explain something to you. I don't care what you do. I really don't. Because you done went along with this foolish, foolishness and you calling it, you don't want to get involved in nation shenanigans. Well, don't drag us in yours. We don't know. I don't know, nor do I care. No, I don't have an answer for you. Got no time for this damn foolishness. I don't know what the hell you talking about. I can't go in there and say that to Marjorie at no damn point in my life. I don't even know how to... I can. And... and, and And let me tell you something. I have, like, really, really large lips. And I have no idea how I could form any piece of the lip fat to say (laughs) nothing you just said or what he just said. Ain't no way in hell. Do you mind if she come in here and sleep with me all night? Is that all right? 
Is that no, all that's right? How he said it. That's how he said it. <laughs> Is that all right? The fact that he can ask you that. Uh, yeah. It's been going on for a long time. Yeah. Today. Yeah. Mm. She's just she's just done with it now. I'm, I'm old and I'm tired of that. Okay, well, yeah. they ain't. And she moved into the yeah. guest house. Yeah, she, she like, moved out. She moved so out of my husband wants house. to know, can he move housemate in? I don't even know how you do that. What part of Tampa is it? But, uh, Why you want to know? Specifically? That's you? Uh-huh. Just, come on, Shirley. Let's go. We don't give this no Moving more on. damn time. <laughs> Moving on. I was just trying to help. This Mo- Moving on. Bam in Raleigh says, I'm a single parent of a 17-year-old son, and he drove my car over the weekend. And apparently he was fooling around in there because there were long strings of weave on the back seat and a bobby pin on the floor. I asked him why my car was left so messy. And he said because he was making out in the back seat. Mm. My heart stopped. Uh, then he said he'd never lie to me and <laughs> asked if I'd rather he brings his girlfriend to his bedroom or if they did it in a car. I'm still speechless. How do I handle him? Well, what do you mean handle him? You can't handle him. He handling her. <laughs> he doing all his handling outside in the car. He want to know <laughs> if he can start handling it in his room. Yeah. See, you 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 know, it's a little too late. What 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 you trying to raise him for now? You gave him the car, the weave strands is in the back seat, and the bobby pin. You asked the boy, why is the back seat so messy? He said, because I was back there fooling around, having sex back there, mama. Making out. Now you didn't we know what to do. They was having sex. <laughs> so now <laughs> since you looking crazy, he said he never lied to you. If you don't want your car messed up, would you mind if I come in here and mess up these Spider-Man sheets of mine? Because that's where I really want to go. I want to tear all these Hulk posters off the wall and put some real imprints up on the wall. I want some booty cheeks on my wall, mama. I don't do things I used to do in my room. I'm in my room. I'm having other kind of thoughts. Yeah. You my little man. You know, I'm single. You my only man. You my little man. Well, that's how he acting now. <laughs> He acted like a little man. He's 17 and he back there. Weave hair and bobby pin. <laughs> mm. So how should she handle him? It's too late. Too late, you saying? You saying that right. Oh, no. But that girl got to get her hair together, though. It's just too much falling out of it. <laughs> you stop. <laughs> mm. Mm. So there's nothing yeah. she can do now? It's too late, are you what, saying that? What, well, I can tell you this right here. Once a young man has been introduced to the golden egg, uh-huh. there ain't no going back. There's more hair to come. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, yeah, you 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 can't stop. You don't stop having sex once you had it. Yeah. Cause that's your whole goal in life now. Mm-hmm. So Seventeen. Should she stop letting him use the car or tell him. Absolutely it don't matter. You ain't gotta let him use the car. He gonna steal it. You need a vacuum. That's what you gonna yeah. Do. No, he gonna take it while you sleep. Yeah, he gonna be. <laughs> and he gonna bring it back and tell you, Mama, I ain't gonna lie to you. I took your car while you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, ain't, he don't lie to her. Yeah, you, you raised a good little boy. He will tell yeah, you the truth. And he so. think y'all got that type of relationship. Y'all talk about everything, remember? Remember, you could come to your mama with anything. Well, Mama, I'm having sex in the back of the car now. <laughs> All right. And I don't really know how to get her from shedding. So do you have any suggestions? <laughs> shedding. <laughs> What kind of hair products should I should she use, Mom? If if she used bergamot or proline, well, let's slow it down because I know that's what bergamot, you used to wear. Please, uh. bergamot. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, she's got a problem with this young man. There, there is definitely a problem there. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's it, huh? The CLO. Yeah, I, 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 I know. He's this, been this introduced boy. to it, and that's no, it. No, this boy, he's, it's, it's, he is now. Yeah. He owns it. It is his quest the rest of his life. There's nothing you can do about it. You can right. run well, about uh, it. Coming up show next, work around it. Entertainment news at the top of the hour right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at 20 minutes after the hour, we have a very special guest. Miss Jill Scott. Haven't heard what? that in a while, have you? Okay. Miss Jill Scott will be in the building. She's going to join us to tell Please. us about her brand new movie. Uh, and, and we'll talk about it. But right now, let's go to some entertainment news. Um, 
Wow. Although Joe Exotic, the star of Tiger King, has been in jail for quite a while now, he's still a trending topic. And because of that, Netflix is slated to release the sequel, Tiger King 2. This oh. is going down November 17th, like I said, on Netflix. And according to Tiger King 2 trailer, uh, it's filled with more footage that we didn't get to see in the first Tiger King series. Season Woo. 2 takes a deeper look into the mysterious disappearance of Carol Baskin's first husband, Don Lewis, back in 1997. Uh, although Joe Exotic is still in prison, sentenced to 22 years for a murder for hire scheme, his presence is all throughout the trailer for Tiger mm -hmm. King 2, and there's telephone audio of him from a Texas prison. Mm -hmm. uh, shortly after Netflix released the official trailer for Tiger King 2, Carol Baskin sued the production company, insisting that the producers and Netflix cut out all footage of her for the sequel. Uh, we all have to see how this turns out. So are you guys going to watch it? She's going go to in? jail. Yes, what has she done That's with him? We want to know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, mm. yeah, she going to jail. I knew she was going to jail when she was on Dancing with the Star. That's it, Steve. Her right bad here. dancing ass with all that tidy <laughs> stuff on. Take that animal print off and get your old ass off this show. Why is you on the show? She can't dance, Steve. Dancing mm -mm. with the stars. She does not want this one. Couldn't, have, couldn't even have been on crawling with the animals. You shouldn't have been here not on Dancing with the, with the damn stars. With your non-dancing ass. Out here, like you got something wrong with you dancing, like she got restricted movements. <laughs> hmm. yeah. yeah, we yeah. want answers. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. she Don't going to jail. Netflix, so we can put this All together. This how she did. I didn't see the first one. Y'all been bragging. What? Oh, you what? Yeah, what? I did. Tommy, I'm gonna tell you something. You know, I don't watch nothing. But that was during the pandemic. We were all you quarantined. You missed yeah. one of the great pieces of bull crap that would <laughs> come on TV. See bro. right there. True. You you missed yeah, you one of the great people. Tommy, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. His husband seen anything like this before, right? had the raggedest mouth. This what? ugly ass man. I'm sitting up here, I'm trying to figure out who picked him. I don't care what you, who you love, but who picked him with these meth-infested teeth he got? <laughs> he didn't have a tooth that wasn't rotten in his head, Tommy. Wow. It was bad, T. Tommy, it was like watching a bad car accident. You know, when you drive, you know you're not supposed to look, but you have to keep looking Slow down just a little bit. Let me get a glimpse. And You're looking remember, at this show like, why am I watching this? I know. Remember how they fed the animals with, like, discarded meat from, like, mm -hmm. Walmart in the dumpster, and they go in the dumpster and get the meat, and that's how they feed the animals? It was just it was, it was just it was compelling much. TV. That's all I can tell you. You could <laughs> not watch it. Mm -mm. And where's Don? <laughs> Which one? Oh, yeah, Don, Don Lewis. Yeah, Don, where Don? He still missing. Where's Don? I that's know. that's what know. I'm saying. We want yeah. answers. That's all we want to know. We do. Disappear. What? Yeah. <laughs> well, if she has her way, it won't come on TV, but I, I don't think she's going to get her way. All right, so an even stranger news, guys. A white man named David Duvall sued his former employer after he was terminated. He alleged he was fired because he is white. And get this, he Ooh. was awarded... $10 million in his lawsuit. Now, according right. to NBC News, David Duvall, a white hospital executive, was fired back in 2019 and alleged he was fired without reason as part of an intentional campaign to promote diversity in its management ranks. He also alleged he was fired because of his sex and gender. Duvall testified that he was fired just before his fifth anniversary with the company, uh, where he would be entitled to a larger severance package. He says he was replaced by a black woman and a white woman. Duvall also stated the firing violated uh, part of the Civil Rights Act. The Winston-Salem, uh, North Carolina-based company, Novant Health, denied the allegations and maintained that Duvall was fired for inadequate performance and for delegating critical tasks to those he managed. Okay, that's why they said they fired him. Ultimately, the jury ruled that either race or sex was a factor in Duvall's termination and sided with him. Mm. Mm. Mm, he went got his own Benjamin Crump, didn't he? Yeah. Got some money. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So I got to ask you, Judge Steve, this sounds that's like funny, a perfect Tom. case for you. <laughs> perfect well, get case ready. for you. Get ready, because here they come. 
How would you have handled this, Steve? Well, I wouldn't have handled nothing. I would have threw, threw it out. Mm-hmm. I, the whole time he'd have been talking, I'd have just been saying, so? <laughs> Not the so. So? <laughs> the Welcome to term. the club, <laughs> homie. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, you mad yeah. about that. Oh, well, we've been mad. Well, thank you. Right. Next case. Yeah. Right. I love it, Judge Steve. So. Yeah. Wait a minute, Steve. And? 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 I love it. I can't do this to Mr. Duval, Steve. I, right. <laughs> I love how they said he was really fired for inadequate performance because he wasn't doing his job, and he, he delegated critical tasks to those he managed. Well, that's probably true. Mm. You know it's true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. That's true. Yeah. 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 Ten million. Wow. Yeah, he got ten million dollars. Isn't that crazy? Mm. Boy. The company you let a black appeal. person go in there talking about I got fired for race. Yeah, you sure did. Yes. They fired me because I'm black. Yeah. 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 They yeah. only fired yeah. this person and, anyway. <laughs> and ain't that what we've been doing? Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. All right. All right, guys. Coming up next, Jill Scott joins us to talk about her new Lifetime movie, Highway to Heaven, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. As promised, everybody, we got our very, very special guest on the phone. She's family. Three-time Grammy Award winning singer-songwriter. She's a New York Times best-selling poet. A multimedia entrepreneur and a cr- critically acclaimed actress. This, this girl got chops for real, man. Yes. Her newest project is a Lifetime's original movie, Highway to Heaven. And it's a reboot of the iconic television series from the 80s. Uh, she not only stars in it, she's also an executive producer. That's another hat. Just mm. keep reinventing herself. The Highway to Heaven uh, premieres, uh, Highway to Heaven premieres this Saturday, everybody. November 6th, we're going to find out more about it. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the great artists of our times, please put your hands together for the family member, our girl, Miss Jill Scott. Yes, sir. Yeah. Good morning, Jill. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Man, that was awesome. Funny. Man, you are awesome. Oh, you make me sound good. Girl, I'm trying to, you are nationwide is on my Ooh, side. Oh, she's singing that. Man, yeah, I'll be yes. Going. Well, I'm going to go out and get some damn insurance. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most soulful damn commercial for insurance I've ever heard. Her ass be blowing. Killing it. <laughs> yes. Hey, Jill. Oh, thank you. <laughs> hey, let's talk about this. Your, your new movie in Lifetime's Highway to Heaven. Uh, it's a reboot of the classic uh, 80s Highway to Heaven uh, TV series. Yeah. And you play the role of Angela, an angel that's sent back to Earth by God to help others in need. Tell us more about the movie. Um, the movie is about an angel that is coming to do her work. She doesn't know why um, uh, or who. She just knows that she has a job to do. And um, people that she's helping thus far, they have a greater purpose in this world. And she wants to assist them. Um, I did the film because I thought, man, it has been so rough these last couple of years. Yeah. It's been very frustrating and, and, and dark. And it, it can feel hopeless in a lot of ways. So I wanted to do something that was sweethearted, that would remind people that they can be angelic too, be an angel to somebody. You don't know how, you don't know when, but you know, there's there's always that opportunity to do good. Wow. You know what? A, a lot of us remember the old 80s TV series, but when, when a person yeah. watches this show for new viewers, what, what do you hope to take away for them is? Oh, man. I, I hope they feel good. I hope mm. they feel good and recognize that that there is there is a, a sweetness and a power to all of us, and that that kindness, being kind to someone, is yeah. it can go a long, <laughs> long way. Yeah, yeah, that seems to be uh, missing these days, and I do think it's a good idea to have something like that because you're right, man. It's just been a rough two years. Hey, uh, hang on, Jill. Hey, everybody, hang on. We're coming back with more with Jill Scott right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, everybody, uh, we're back, and our special guest on the phone is uh, is a New York Times bestselling poet, author, entrepreneur, mm. 
and, and doggone it, flat out damn soul single. Come on here, boy. <laughs> Come on here. Skip, skip neo soul and all that damn soul single. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. You Take didn't get the album. Walk. You don't know the hits. You need to familiar yourself, f- familiarize yourself with them. Grits. She's on the phone today, and she's talking about the new movie on uh, Lifetime called Highway to Heaven. And she's executive producer on the movie. And let's talk nice. about that part of it, nice. Jill, because now you're the star of the movie, but you're also the executive uh, producer of the movie. Did you find it rewarding or was it challenging for you? Well, what was your role here? Oh, I loved it. What I did was made some decisions. As you know, um, sets can be very challenging. Um, not just that does is just to say it lightly. You know, yeah. the hours can be really long. The energy can be this kind of negative or foul, just, just trying to get through it. Right. And I didn't want that. So I wanted to make sure that the energy was high and that the, the camaraderie was there. Because if the cameraman don't show up, we ain't got no film. You know what I'm saying? Hello. So, Hello. Right. So I wanted to create a team environment. Um, and that's what we've done. So this is the first of several. There will be more Highway to Heaven because the, the vibe is good. Um, so there you have it. Wow. Outstanding. What a come. Good to hear. Yeah. Well, yeah. Inspirational. It, it means making everybody feel valued and important. Yeah. Mm. And, wow. and wow. that's what I did as an executive producer. Also, wow. saw also little things like... Um, when it came to Angela as an actress, as when it came to Angela, I did not want her to be perfect because mm. maybe, you know, there's this concept that, that angels are supposed to be perfect. Angels, yeah. you know, are placed here and, and resemble people. Mm-hmm. We're flawed, oh, wow. all of us, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. every last one of us. And you don't know who's going to come into your life just to, to, to lift it. You know, to give you another push, just to, you know, right. to make you remember how to smile. You don't know. Right. Allow that. Inspire you. Be that. You, you're you're exactly right you. because angels come in. My mother was an angel, but my mama will slap you, though. Right. Slap by an angel. Yeah. yeah. That's good show. So that's good. <laughs> hey, hey, Jill, you working on any new music? Yup. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. Get in that studio, oh, yeah. girl. Yes. Yep. Yes. I'm waiting. really excited. I've been waiting for this. I just, I can't move until my spirit moves me. I just can't. So I was waiting for producers that um, understand a, a hook, a verse, bridges. I was waiting for, <laughs> for producers that, you know, know how to play instruments. And that's no disrespect to anybody else because they also know how to push all the buttons, which is great right. too. But I right. needed that. I need feels, and right. um, I'm getting them. I'm getting them, and by I some really you. surprising producers too. Watch. Wow, that's Can't really wait. good to hear. We're Can't waiting wait. on that. We'll hey, Jill, listen. Uh, you you've always been one of our favorites. I'm just telling you, man. You're just such a talented woman and just such a heartfelt person. You're always genuine and sincere. Uh, that's why we've embraced you here over the years and your family members, and we're going to support the show, everybody. It's this Saturday night, November 6th, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central. Uh, it's called Highway to Heaven. It's starring Jill Scott. It's called Highway to Heaven. She plays an angel that comes back to Earth and uh, to help others in need. And the angel's not perfect, but it's going to be a great show. And she's the executive producer and the star of the show. And she's family member. So we got to show up and show out, Steve Harvey Nation. Come on. This Saturday, yeah. November 6th, be there. Set your, set your recording devices. Get it. I don't care what you got to do. But on November 6th, this Saturday night at 8, 7 Central, Geo Scott's. Uh, Highway to Heaven will be on. Jill Scott, we love you so much, girl. For real. I can tell. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you no, so much. I real. love you too. I can tell. All right, dog. La- my feet. <laughs> there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Jill Scott in the building. Woo-hoo! Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jill. We love you. Coming up next, it is the nephew and the prank phone call. Right after this, you're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up right about four minutes after the hour, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject, I can't take him anywhere. I can't take him nowhere. 
Uh, but right now, we'll get into that. <laughs> we'll get into that in just a bit. Wow. But right now, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got now? <laughs> Guess who's moving next door? Oh, new yeah. neighbors? Yeah. Guess who's moving next door? Cat dog, let's go. Hello, I'm trying to reach uh, Mr. Is it Dolphin? Dolan? Dolan, Dolan. Mr. Dolan? Yes, sir. How you doing? My name is uh, 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 Clifford. Clifford. Yeah, what can I do for you, Mr. Uh, you, you, you live at um, uh, Cheshire Drive? Why do you want to know that? Uh, well, actually, I, I, I'm, I'm at 1623. I bought. I bought the. Uh, I, I actually bought the house that was for sale next door to you. Oh, okay. Well, well congratulations. But how did you get my number? Uh, well, actually, the realtor told me that he he had your number because I said I wanted to reach out to the neighbors next door, and he, and he told me that Mr. Dolan was actually the person next door, and and uh, he didn't think you would mind me me actually getting the number. Okay. Well, I, I'll talk with the realtor uh, later. But what can I do for you, sir? Well, well what I, what I wanted to know is, do, do you have any problems like living next? Next door to, to 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 black people. I'm sorry. Wh what did you just ask me? I, I mean, like like I you know like I said, I just bought the place next door, and I, I want to know, do you have any problems? You know, living next door to black people. Uh, no, sir. Uh, I have no problem. I'm assuming you're a black man, and uh, I have no problem with that. Uh, I judge people by their actions, not their color. Okay. Now, do you do you do you have any any black people experience? Well, yeah, I've worked with, gone to school with, have several friends of many different ethnicities. Uh, but what, what is it? What, what's this? How is this relative? Well, you know, like I say, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be living next to you, and I, I'm just keep making sure that you know you and I can coincide or coexist with, rather to, uh, on on the same block and not really have a problem with one another. Basically, is what I'm trying to say. Well, do you have a problem with white people? Uh, no, no, no. I don't have a problem with white people. I, uh, I I'm cool. I'm just I'm just trying to make sure you know. Uh, I mean, because me and you already have a bit of a problem already. You know. Oh, oh so, we do. Yeah, yeah, we we have a problem. I'm, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm bothering me while I'm at work. What's your problem? Okay, well, my problem is this, is that, you know, after purchasing the property, I went downtown to the city and actually looked at, you know, the, the layout of this entire property. And when I look at it, you're actually 25, close to 30 feet over the property line. Well, no, you're looking at the wrong map. No, no. The fence that separates my backyard from your backyard, you are 30 feet over that. That's impossible. You know, no, no. Listen, and I know this. Now, let me, let me, I'm going to tell you how, how, how I look at You got a jacuzzi in your backyard, right? Oh, so you've been, you've been spying on me? No, I haven't been spying on you, sir. I'm just telling you, clo close to that, not far from that fence line, don't, don't you have a jacuzzi there? Well, yeah, as a matter of fact, I do, yes. Okay, now the pool is the pool is okay, but but if I if I push that fence line back thirty and actually get the property that I'm supposed to have, I pretty much own your 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 jacuzzi, your hot tub. I see. Okay, let me tell you something. Uh, I've been in that house for ten years. We put that fence up when we moved in, and it was based on the property line that was that was set when uh, ten years ago. I don't know what you're looking at. But my fence is not moving, my jacuzzi's not moving, and there's there's no changing that. Okay, well let me let me let me I'm glad you 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 voice what you wanted to voice. Now 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 you hear you hear old Clifford out. Let me tell you something. Uh either we gonna take the fence line and move it where it's supposed to be, or we gonna put a gate between uh uh our two yards and I'm gonna be able to come and get in this jacuzzi and pool whenever I want to. All right, let's 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 talk about this. First of all, there's gonna not gonna be any gate. Okay? And, and as far as you just coming over and getting in the jacuzzi at will, uh I got a real problem with that. Uh you've called me at work. Uh I'm on the job and I'm having to listen to this on a future neighbor uh who who's making weird claims about how he owns part of my Land, that. I own the jacuzzi, sir. No, no, you did not pay for that jacuzzi. You did not pay for that fence. You just showed up making. He uh, called me at work, and 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 then hand me some story uh, with no evidence. I'll go down to city hall and look at those papers myself because I don't trust a word you're saying. I've been there for ten years. I've had ten other 
neighbors in that backyard. Y'all cycle through once a year, I swear, and I've never had any problems with them until you come along. This is some Okay, well, I tell you what, here's, here's something you need to understand. You got a new black neighbor, and you got a new black neighbor that owns part of, owns your jacuzzi because you're over the fence line, all right? And as soon as I move in, I'm coming and I'm getting in my jacuzzi. The you will, man. You know what I mean? Just no. Move into that. I'm going to use the jacuzzi on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You get it on Tuesday, Thursday, and the weekend. That's it. Because part of this damn jacuzzi belongs to me. The jacuzzi is owned by a black man and a white man, and we're going to get along. Bottom line. Look here. Listen here, you Who are you to dictate what days I get to use my jacuzzi? Because it's not, not just coming over to my jacuzzi. It's not just your you jacuzzi. Are not. It's our jacuzzi because you, you built it. That's the only thing. That makes it yours. It being on my part of the property helps make it mine. So therefore, we're gonna share this damn jacuzzi, and we're gonna try to get your in my jacuzzi. I'm tossing your across the fence. I will be there Mondays, Wednesdays, and you Friday. ain't gonna be. I will be standing at my jacuzzi with a shotgun. You take one step over to my property, my property line. I swear, if I could jump through this phone, I'd wring your neck. You know who's gonna be in there with me? Who? Who the gonna be in there? I'm gonna have Cunningham in the damn jacuzzi. Who? Cunningham. My coworker? <laughs> what the? Hey man, this is nephew Tommy, man. Your your, your boy Cunningham got me to prank phone call you. This oh that oh payback to. <laughs> We got you, man. We got you. You got me good. Hey, I got one more thing to ask you, man. What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Radio Show. Man. Come on in here. Tommy, Tommy you, you, dog. I, God, he, he went too far. I think, man, you're going to come my jacuzzi, <laughs> but you done set the days up. Don't, well, it belong to both of us, Steve, all right? And it's, it's good black folk and white folk own stuff together like that. But we're going to have to learn to share. Okay? So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it belongs to me. All right? You get it Tuesday and Thursday. You pass the property line. Hey, partner, it's mine. Okay? Well, he used what it, it in is. proper context, Tommy. He did do that. He used it in proper context. He said, well, look here, you black blankety blank. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I'll tell you what. He wasn't having I'm be it. Staring at, I'm going to be staring at my door with a shotgun. Mm-hmm. Dip your foot in my damn sauna. <laughs> he was mad. I mean, he mad. was mad. He was hot. And then uh, he was like, it ain't even about race. How you just going to tell me about my jacuzzi? You know, you got to start man. off and figure out, you know, where they at. You know, you want to yeah, test the Yeah, you got to push that button, Tommy. Yeah, push he that was button. mad you had that's his phone temp. number, though. So I, so I ain't got a problem with nobody. What, 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 what's, with what's this pertaining with it? Work with him? Man? What? what? <laughs> Boy, but when he said that he wanted to come through that phone line and ring your neck, I said, yeah. dude, he's been around some black people before. I'm coming yeah. through this phone yeah, ring your damn neck, man. I'm with him. Man. I'm me and you fight. He got a pool out of jacuzzi. He's trying to figure out what you're talking about. Right. Okay. <laughs> you get my number, all of that. That's how you do it, huh? That's how stupid rolls. Stupid going to be uh, in Jacksonville, Florida, telling jokes November 12th and 13th at the Ramona Pavilion Ballroom. That is November 12th and 13th. Tickets are on sale right now. The following week, Dayton, Ohio, baby, at the convention center. The nephew coming to town. First time ever. Get your tickets. They on sale right now. Stupid takes flight. The stupid shall rise again. <laughs> Yeah. Thank I you, nephew. Oh God, I <laughs> Strawberry love letter coming up next. I can't take him nowhere. We'll get back. We'll get into that when we come back. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it's time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and just click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air. You hear that? Just like this one. And you never know, this one could be yours. Mm-hmm. It could be. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the Strawberry Letter. Subject, I can't take him nowhere. Dear Stephen Shirley, I've been living with my man for nine years, and he said if I stayed with him for ten years, he might marry me. I just laugh it off because there's no way I'd marry this man after all he said and done to embarrass me. 
He's 59 and I'm 49, but I am head of our household and I run our transportation business all by myself. He waited until he was 55 years old to start drinking and he can't handle his liquor at all. He's urinated on himself in public and <laughs> late, <laughs> he's laid on the floor and took a nap in an Applebee's. When he's not drunk, he still says inappropriate things. I have a 13-year-old daughter, and he showed up at her recital and was clapping and yelling out like a crazy person. She laughed it off, but I know she wanted to throw something at us. I have to run the business, and I let him handle the drivers and keep the cars in pristine condition because he can't deal with customers. He gets rude with people on the phone because his patience is short. He's been short with my father one time too many, and my dad told him he'd knock him out. So now they aren't speaking. It's one thing after another. So I am staying with him only because our business is doing well, and I don't want to have to split it with him if we break up. I know for a fact that he's messing around because I read his text messages. Uh, he spends money on the women, so I have to put him on a salary so he will not give these women the impression that he's got money. He doesn't mind anything I do, and he doesn't challenge me on anything. Do you think I'm wasting my life on him, or I'm going to wake up one day, and I'm going to wake up one day and regret how I handle things? Is it, or, or is it true that the grass is not greener on the other side, and I should stay put? Please help. I think you already know. I really do. Uh, and, and you're fed up, and you're miserable, and you don't have to be. I don't understand why you stay with this idiot for so long. Almost 10 years? Uh, he's been rude to your dad, embarrassed your daughter, urinated on himself in public, and you know he's cheating on you, and, uh, among other things. I mean, this man has done everything he could possibly do to make just, you know, any sane person break up with him. So the problem has got to be you. I mean, you're the one who stayed with him this long and, and has been taking this stuff for this long. Why? Because you say you, you don't want to give him half the business? I mean, you guys aren't married or anything, and you don't mention whether his name is on the business, so you can get out. I mean, isn't your peace of mind worth parting with him? Uh, according to you, you run the company anyway. You do everything yourself. Uh, you pay him a salary. I, I just say, so let's not be greedy here or anything like that. Cut your losses. Get rid of this guy. Even if you weren't in business with him, you should get out. I mean, after nine years, it's a toxic relationship, and it's going nowhere. He doesn't sound like he will move out because um, he's got it too good where he is with you. So I just say, please start looking for a place for you and your daughter now. Steve? I pretty much feel the same way Shirley feels. I don't I, you know. You know, sometimes we get the these, <laughs> you know, sometimes we get to these strawberry letters and we don't. I don't really care about them. This is one of them. <laughs> you know, I kind of How do you really, really give feel? a damn. <laughs> Talk about but, keeping it 100. <laughs> yeah. Let me dig in here a little bit yeah. and find some. You can find some nuggets. Yeah, all right. Well, here we go. <laughs> That's what you do. I've been living with my man nine years. He said if I stayed with him for 10 years, he might marry me. This is the biggest blessing in this whole letter. He gave you a free 10-year pass to find out exactly why you should not marry him. I just laugh it off because there's no way I'd marry this man after all he said and done to embarrass me. He's 5'9", well, he's 59, and I'm 49. I thought this letter was going to be about something else. <laughs> he's 59 and I'm 49. But I'm the head of our household, and I run our transportation business all by myself. Now, this fool and waited till he's 55 years old to start drinking. I'm going to tell you right now, that ain't what you want to start this late in life. <laughs> drinking is a sport. It's something you have to play all your – you have to do this sport for a while to get good at it. Football players don't become football players at 25. They've been playing peewee football, sandlot football, junior high, high school, college. That's how you get to the pros. You can't go to the pros at 55. Now, he don't just start drinking at 55. He getting drunk at 55, and he can't handle his <laughs> liquor at all. He done urinated on himself in public. That's because he just started. He don't know how to handle his liquor. 
Soon as he pour it in, it come right out. <laughs> and he laid on the floor and took a nap at Applebee's. In hold the on, pee? Hold on, Steve. I knew you could find some nuggets in there. I knew it. All Was right, he coming in up the 20... pee? <laughs> coming, up... <laughs> coming up in 23 minutes after the hour, we'll get part two of Steve's response to the strawberry letter. Oh. The subject, I can't take him nowhere. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. The subject, I can't take him nowhere. Lady been with this dude nine years. He told her if he stayed with her 10, she, he might marry him. Now, she done decided she ain't going to marry this man no matter what. After all, he done done embarrass me. She's 59. She's 49. There's a 10-year difference. She's the head of the household and running the transportation business all by herself. He waited until he was 55 years old to start drinking. I don't know anything you can start at 55 and be good at it. Golf, nothing. You can't start nothing at 55. None of your motor skills is as sharp at 55 as they were at 25. Mm-hmm. You start drinking at 55, and you know what didn't happen now? He can't hold his liquor at all. He urinated on himself in public. <sighs> That's because you had six ounces too much, and the pipes bust. What? And now you just standing there peeing on yourself. <laughs> and he laid on the floor and took a nap in an Applebee's. And my question is, did he pee on the floor in Applebee's and then did he lay in it? He don't need to be drinking at all. Who lays down in the floor at Applebee's? I've never been that tired, and I've been to all the restaurants. I was exhausted one night at a Waffle House. I didn't even fall asleep in the chair. Who lays down on the floor at a damn Applebee's? Your drunk drunk ass go home, man. And when he ain't drunk, he do inappropriate things. He come crazy, like a holly crazy person at your little girl's recital. Showed up at the recital, clapping and yelling like crazy. She laughed it off. That's my baby. That's my baby. (laughs) All in the back. He gets rude with people. Now she say, I have to run the business and I let him handle the drivers and keep the cars in pristine condition because he can't deal with customers. He gets rude with people in, on the phone because his patience is short. Mm-hmm. And I also bet he's short too. That's what a lot of short people act like that. I just wanted to throw that out. She say his patience is short. That's why he rude. But that's probably because he's short too because short people tight all the time. I don't see that correlation, but okay. You don't see that? Uh-huh. It's right there on the paper. <laughs> it's obvious to me. Then she said, he's been it. short with my father. See, short people always get short. Tall people that's, don't that's do that. twice. Yeah. <laughs> he got short with his daddy one time. Your daddy told him he'll knock his ass out. So they ain't speaking yeah. no more. One thing after another. So I'm staying with him only because our business is doing well, and I don't want to have to split it with him if we break up. Remember that because I have a valuable lesson to teach you about that. I know for a fact he's messing around because I read his text. He spends money on the women, so I put him on the salary so he would not get these women the impression that he's got money. You a bad girl. So you just put him on the salary. But he took it because he don't mind anything I do, and he doesn't challenge me on anything. That's because you the man of the house. You said you the head of the household, and you run the business. He don't challenge you, and he messing around with other women. He pees on himself. He lays down in restaurant <laughs> floors, and he embarrasses your daughter. Do you think I'm wasting my life on him? Excuse me. He pees on himself. He lays down in restaurant floors. He embarrasses your daughter. Your daddy don't like him. and told him he's going to knock his ass out. He dating other women. He don't do nothing in the car business, y'all got, because he can't talk to nobody because he's short. And now he messing around with women, and you done put him on the salary. Do you think I'm wasting my life on him? I don't want to read this no more. I'm go- am I going to wake up one day and regret how I handle things? Or is it true that the grass is not green on the other side and I should stay put? Please help. Of course you're wasting your time. And let's understand something else. Your grass, your grass ain't green. So what is you worrying about it being the green on the other side? Your grass ain't green. You live in a sandlot playground with a man that ain't a whole man. And let me ask you something. Stay for what? What do you get out of it? 
And then you said, this is what I want to go back to. I'm staying with him only because our business is doing well, and I don't want to have to split it with him before we break up. You don't have to give him half. Who told you that? Anybody. And, and what are you doing in the business? You ain't got to give him half. First of all, when you go to court and you bring your text to court that he's been cheating with other women, he don't get half of the business. And then when you show in the records how you do all the things, and what you worried about him leaving the business for? All he do is wash cars. You can get anybody to wash a car. Anybody wash cars. <laughs> you can get anybody. Ask one of them dudes that's working in the transportation company for an extra. Will you wash these cars? Cars be sparkling. You are so crazy. <laughs> sparkling. He out there peeing on cars and everything. You should have been here. That's not washing the car, Herbert. <laughs> you peeing on the car for? Our cars. I was drinking and I was standing finna, finna go to Applebee's. Don't you Is go back down to that Applebee's no more. They don't want you back. Embarrassing me like that. Well, when is the baby playing the piano? You're not going to the recital no more, Herbert. <laughs> can't take your ass nowhere. You can't go to the recital. You can't go down to Applebee's. They don't let us in there no more because you peed in the flow and your stupid ass laid in it and went to sleep. And now you look outside and you're peeing on the car. supposed to be washing them. Wash the car. Don't pee on the car. You can leave your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Instagram and on Facebook at Steve Harvey FM and check out him. the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Coming up next, it's Junior with Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we go. Junior with Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? Like, we don't know, but what you got, yeah. Junior? Well, we got to say congratulations to the mm-hmm. Atlanta Braves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-uh. World Series. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Yeah. uh-uh. They win uh-uh. their second one. What? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Ain't uh-uh. no enthusiasm in your voice. Time is sick. <laughs> Carl is sick. It is. You know, you got to let somebody live in Atlanta do it. Uh, okay. Congratulations. How about them Braves? Man, take this congratulations. And man, no, no. Man. Take this ass with like this. <laughs> just last night. What you need to take. You for them Braves, man. Atlanta, Stepping man. on them. I don't give a damn. I live here. I live here. And so I'm taking credit. We know where you live. Your ass live in Houston where the losers live. Congratulations to the Atlanta Braves, baby. Smacking that booty. <laughs> Seven nothing. Right, now man. go ahead. Yeah. Seven That's all nothing. you had. Yes, that, that, my that wasn't even close. They wanted that trophy. Seven nothing. And if I was y'all next season, stop pitching the Jorge Stelaire. Because he put him up three nothing in the bottom of the third. I don't know why Ooh. we need pitches in. Our pitching was horrible last night, Tommy. No, we, it wasn't, I, man. The Atlanta hitting was just good. This a whooping, Junior. This yeah, ain't it was. your pitching was I mean, horrible. It was, it was, this it was. a whooping, man. It's Congratulations all good, man. Don't to even the worry Braves. about it. God no, will. no. Look, change your attitude <laughs> on these congratulations you calls. You shut up. You from you Cleveland. Ta- you damn you right ain't up got from no Cleveland. quarterback no more. And the Cleveland we- Indians ain't doing a damn thing. Shut <laughs> up. Cleveland <laughs> Indians ain't doing nothing. We yeah. all at the house together now. I don't know <laughs> what you're talking about. Houston's <laughs> is at their house just like the Indians is at their house. So I don't know what all this, all this extra is for. And I know yeah, you ain't talking about who ain't got a quarterback. No <laughs> quarterback. You got to go. be kidding. I'm not going to hear where you didn't say. We're going to get back, to the, Cleveland. Gonna get back the to the Braves. The Braves. The, yeah. well, the Cleveland ain't got a quarterback, but he ain't going to jail. And that's the other <laughs> thing about it. You had Congratulations to, to the Braves. Now, oh, I hope Deshaun Watson survived this thing and, 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 and you know, find his way back yeah. and, and, and can find forgiveness uh, from these women or whatever got to happen. But that's what I hope happened for that young man because everybody deserves a second chance. But don't we you don't dare even... bring up quarterback we should be with the about situation y'all got. Y'all shouldn't uh, be talking about nobody that do passes. Back to the Braves, please. <laughs> this is about baseball. Thank you. That's what this is about. <laughs> yeah. How about the Braves? Congratulations to the Braves. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's I don't know what you're mad at me again. for. I'm, I'm right around the corner from the stadium. Because you ain't from Atlanta. You just over there jaw jacking. Just shut Y'all, up. I live here. And you know why I moved here? Because I thought they were going to win the World Series. <laughs> <laughs> and I was not. Your, all your moving <laughs> baseball.
pissed on the brace? Uh, right there, I I knew the Falcons weren't gonna be worth damn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Junior, thank you. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at the top of the hour right after this. Go Braves! You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now, guys, to talk about yesterday's election. It was a big night for the GOP. Republican Glenn Youngkin is the brand new Virginia governor. Uh, Democratic wow. former um, candidate Terry McAuliffe, according to CNN, Republican Youngkin drafted a playbook for Republicans to navigate around Donald Trump, keeping the former president's base energized while also winning back a share of suburbanites who had fled the party during Trump's tenure. Uh, The governor's race in New Jersey is really right now too close to call, but the votes counted showed a very tight race, which remained uncalled for for now. Uh, This is not how Democratic Governor Phil Murphy or Garden State Democrats envisioned that going down. Uh, Democrat Eric Adams has been elected the 110th mayor of New York City. Adams is a retired New York City Police Department captain. And he will be the second black mayor in the city's history after right. the late David Dinkins. Good Take news. That. That's good yeah. news. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's Moving to Atlanta news. now, Steve. Uh, mayoral candidate Felicia Moore, the city council president, has advanced to a runoff election on November 30th, where her opponent will be city council member Andre Dickens. In wow. a campaign dominated by the issue of public safety, both wow. Moore and Dickens had favored hiring more police officers to combat a rise in violent crime. Wow. Yeah. I'm going to tell so you, man, that, be... that's a shocker. Yeah. That's a shocker because mm-hmm. a lot of people thought Kasim Reed would come back. Mm-hmm. I, did. I was one of those people that thought mm-hmm. that. I thought I thought he would come back. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, the, again, wow. the runoff election will be November 30th. Um, wow. Voters in Minneapolis rejected the police overhaul after protests against George Floyd's killing. The voters decided to keep the city's police department intact. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that bill failed. A lot of takeaways from the election mm-hmm. last mm-hmm. night. Uh, we got to vote for the midterms. Es- Virginia, the that's a big loss. Yeah. That's a big loss in Virginia to lose to the GOP like that. Yeah, and then oh, the midterms yeah. are coming up. So, yeah. You know, but uh, I mean, it was a good point raised about how uh, in Virginia, uh, Youngkin, like they said, got around. He kind of distanced himself from Trump, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, they mm-hmm. say that maybe that's the model now that they should use that yeah. the, mm-hmm. that playbook, you know, navigate around Trump and then, um, well, you know, keep you know his what? base energized. Huh? Wait a minute. Navigate around Trump and keep his base energized. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, kind of distance yourself a little bit from Trump, but still keep your base energized. However, he did. How do you it made distance and navigate yourself around him at the same time? How do you do that? Well, he, well, he won. I think <laughs> what worked. what they're trying to say is because the Republicans, those that were Republicans that didn't like Trump, they yeah. were still Republicans. Yeah. So they voted for him. Are oh, you talking about he, the the base con, con, the base being considered the Republican Party? Not that's Trump's what base. I'm saying. That's well, what you I'm know, saying. look, I'm for that because I no, think no, the, the base the base being considered Trump supporters. Yeah, you know, keep okay. them energized. Keep give them a little something. Give them a little something. Whatever he did, yeah, it's still the it's still his base. But the people the people that don't like Trump. But they're still diehard Republicans. Those are I just the people don't. that came I'm, out for him. I'm, I'm done. That's what I'm saying. People who like Donald Trump, I just, I just don't understand that. I just don't. I just voting. don't. And 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 it, mm-hmm. and it really just allows me to see who we're dealing with here. If right. you like Donald Trump as a president and a representative of this country, what you're saying for is you don't mind bigotry. You don't mind sexism. You don't mind blatant racist statements. You you don't you don't mind any of those things, Mm -hmm. as long as what? As long as you win. Yeah. Yes. Or 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 as long as you're right. Yes. Or what, man? Or as long as you get to maintain this superiority complex, Mm -hmm. because that's what it seems to me, man. And I can't. You can't make me think anything else. It ain't cause he loved this country. It ain't. Still divided. We're still divided. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
Well, there you go. Uh, We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 20 minutes after, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. An American Airlines flight attendant suffered a concussion after a passenger allegedly struck her in the face during a flight from New York to California, prompting the pilot to divert to Colorado. This happened last week. According to court documents uh, that were released yesterday, uh, the passenger was charged with assault and interference with a flight crew. The U.S. District Attorney's Office in Colorado um, said in a federal complaint that authorities that this incident began when the man got up to use the bathroom and stretched. The flight attendant told investigators that she was struck in the head after asking him to obey the seatbelt sign and sit down, okay? The passenger allegedly struck her in the head with his elbow, punched her in the face with a closed fist, Uh, One witness told authorities he struck her with a full swing. Another witness recalled him being restrained with duct tape and plastic bands after the altercation. The unknown, unnamed flight attendant had a bloody nose, complained of being dizzy and nauseous. Uh, She was treated by Denver doctors and diagnosed with a concussion. So people are still acting a fool on these airlines. I'd have whooped his ass all the way down to that flight lane. I'm sorry. I'm just telling you, you punch my girl, dog. I, I ain't what? this. I, I promise you, man. I don't care where we at. When I see you, partner, on the plane, what I don't, you got to land way before we get to Denver. Right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because this Ian back there, he's, just he just, he, he, we can't fly this plane. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, coming up next, we'll do a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, time for another round of Would You Rather. Let's get right to it. Would you rather have an extra hour a day? And if you had that extra hour, would you rather spend it sleeping or having sex? (laughs) Oh, come on, sir. We already know. We already know. What are we talking about? Just sleeping with the person or would you be rather having sex with that person? Well, when we get through having sex, we're going to be asleep. So I'm going to get both of them. <laughs> Steve? There's no way I'm getting an extra hour to spend sleep. So you get an extra hour to be unconscious. How stupid is that? But you, but you always you talk know. about, you know, <clears throat> you need more sleep. You, you know, you, you always, don't sleep enough. You, know, you always hear me talking about people sleep too much. Yeah, yeah. That's right. what you always hear me talking about. And I'd be damned if you give me an extra hour, I'm going to do it. Take my extra that I can press forward uh-huh. and be sleep. I can get up and see something else. <laughs> Man, what? Junior? Sleep. Now you just uh-huh. blew your time. <laughs> oh, I think all the men in agreement are B. What, 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 what we going to be sleeping okay. for? All right. I ain't right. even got to have the sex. Just give me the extra hour. <laughs> what? No, but you can only do those two things, sleep or have sex. That's it. Sex. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> During a quarantine, would you rather be alone with your partner or spouse like during that whole the entire time? B. Like the dude on the website, B. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even know what it is. <laughs> Don't even know what your option is. I saw this one on the... On TikTok, I saw one that. Time to ask her yeah. said, Would B. you rather be alone with your family in quarantine with your spouse and family, or B? <laughs> B is, or would you be rather be just alone with a TV, just a TV? That's it. B. Your your family B. or just a TV? What B? You pick B. 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 Yeah. yeah. Y'all didn't go through this pandemic. Uh. <laughs> Don't act I'm like the only one went through the going through it. Uh, don't act surprised about that answer. <laughs> the TV. Hold on, ladies, ladies. Here we yes. go. I'm, I'm gonna go with the girls on this one because I was already alone in the pandemic. <laughs> Remember, he was tree watching. He watched the tree grow. And, yeah, I need somebody in here. <laughs> Yeah. I heard my neighbor don't open. I open mine. Hey, hey. <laughs> what you doing? Yeah, that's me. All right. Was rough. If you <laughs> would you rather, if you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, one food. Pizza. <laughs> would 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 you would you rather for it to be chitlins or cow tongue? 
I'd rather you get this question right. Come on, say it again. Yeah. Would you, if you could, uh, it is right. I'd rather you listen. Oh. See, now we've run out of time. Tommy. Oh, I wasted it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll be back with our last break of the day and closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey at 49 Minutes After, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, here we are, our last break of the day. And before we get out of here and get to Steve's closing, we do want to thank our friend, our family member, Jill Scott. Yes. Yeah, Jill, for checking in with us this morning. Is on Highway to Heaven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's her new Lifetime movie, Tommy, Highway to Heaven. Yeah. Comes on Houston. Saturday, mm-hmm. 8 November 6th. Eastern, 7 Central. 9, 8 November Central. November 6th. 9, 8 Central. Mm-hmm. That ain't what the paper said, but okay. Why don't you all papers say the same thing? My paper says 9, 8 Central. 8, 7 Central. 8, 7 Central. That's on the paper this Saturday, November 6th at 8, <laughs> 9, 8 Eastern, Central. 7. You don't see no 9 <laughs> on your damn paper. My paper, is my, it says it right here, Steve. 9, 8 Central. I got the talking points, girl, <laughs> right here. Well, which right one here. is right then? Because one <laughs> of us is going to miss an hour of the movie. <laughs> I said to Jill how many times, and you sat there and let me say it. <laughs> now you wants to try to correct me. This is not how we're going to do this show no more. Steve, you were we right. How about that? We need you a were meeting. right. Do we have a meeting? We have Stay a meeting. out of it, nephew. We're we having it now? <laughs> yeah, on the Zoom, on the air. <laughs> Clearly. You know how you like to have your meetings, right? All my meetings is public. That way can't nobody say I said nothing else. <laughs> but anyway, the point is, we want to thank Jill Scott. She's got a new Lifetime movie, Highway to Heaven, premiering yeah. November 6th, this Saturday, 8, 7 Central, like I said. Yeah. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> you said what you said. <laughs> I said what I said. <laughs> hey, y'all, my closing remarks, I'm going to do. Uh, I did it on Instagram, and I didn't even know it. I was just talking to an audience one time, and I wanted to share it with you, and it's about disappointment. So here it is. I want to talk to you today about disappointment. Because I think that we all have to grapple with disappointment from time to time. The problem with disappointment is that disappointment also, if you don't understand it, can turn so ugly so fast. Too many people allow disappointment to turn into resentment. So many people think that this disappointment for them symbolizes the end. When you allow for disappointment to turn into resentment and you allow disappointment to turn into the final verdict, you're losing what disappointment actually can become for you. And I want you all to start looking at disappointment as motivation. How many times have you been faced with something that was disappointing? Let's say you go in to get a job and you're on your last interview, and I have been in this position, man. I was trying to get an insurance job one time years ago, and I went in, and I had gotten gone through about three or four interviews. I was at my final interview, and I said, man, I'm about to get this job, man. Get my little family together. I'll be all right. And got to that interview, and they told me no. That disappointment for me was gut-wrenching. I actually got in my car, my little 72 Chevy, and I was driving off, man. And, and tears was in my eyes when I got up on the freeway, and I drove back, and I looked back over at that big building with that big, powerful name on it. And I had gone through four interviews, and all of a sudden, I was so disappointed in not getting hired. But you know what I learned to do, though? From that moment on, I turned all my disappointment into motivation. I said, okay, I use it as a challenge. Okay. I'll show you. From the time my teacher told me that you ain't going to never be nothing, that there's no way they'll put somebody like you on TV because you have a stuttering problem and you can't even talk. But who are you who is issuing out this disappointment? Because you're not going to make me resent you and you're not going to cause me to think that you're denying me this opportunity or you handing me this bad news of disappointment I'm not going to allow you to be my final verdict 
You are not going to be the person who is the author of my destiny. You are not it. That belongs to God, not you. And I will not give that to anyone. So when you're facing disappointment, do not hand that disappointment over to the person who gave it to you in the form of empowerment. Do not allow them to control your destiny that causes you to go into such resentment that you become bitter. That all of a sudden now, all you think about is that you don't have to do that. They are not the author of your future. That belongs to God and only God. Don't let them trip you up by tripping you out. I've had shows canceled, gigs taken. I've been fired from radio. I've been all of that. Oh, I've had some disappointing setbacks. And I just quietly say to myself, you ain't my God. You who think you have the power by telling me no, by turning me down, by refusing me, by voting against me, by telling me that I don't have what it takes. No, 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 no. It's just because you don't know. Because you don't know what God really has for me. And that ain't your fault. So why bear resentment for these people? Because they are not the author of your destiny. And don't you dare give them that. You take that disappointment and you use it as the motivation. I feel sorry for people who tell me no. Because you know what I know? I know they just don't know. And I end up somehow, through God's grace and mercy, showing them all. Keep the right attitude, y'all. God got something for you through all your disappointment. Yeah, that's on my IG page. And I just happened to be thumbing through it mm-hmm. last night and pulled it to play it. And I don't know where I was when I did it. Mm-hmm. It was uh, in the background. And I got some people that work in my social media department, and they turn them into motivational videos. <laughs> For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 